Chapter 6, Electrical Systems, Part 3 of 3. Power in a Series Circuit. Electrical energy, Q, is the ability to do work by harnessing the flow of electricity. The joule is the basic unit of energy. The watt hour and kilowatt hour are also common units of measurement of electrical power. Power is the rate at which electrical energy is transferred or transformed. The watt is the unit of power in electrical systems. One watt is equal to one joule being transformed over a period of one second. Calculating total energy consumption. Your local electrical utility company charges by how much power, watts, your home consumes over a period of time, hours. Uh, energy, measured in watt hours, equals power in watts times time in hours. Parallel circuits. Parallel circuits provide two or more pathways for electricity to flow. Other major differences include voltage remains constant throughout all branches of a parallel circuit, current varies in each branch depending on the resistance value, and the total resistance of a parallel circuit is always less than the smallest resistance value of any branch. Voltage of parallel circuits. The voltage remains constant across all components in a parallel circuit. Kirchhoff's current law, current and parallel circuits. Kirchhoff's current law states that the current entering a point must equal the current exiting that point. Current always seeks the path of least resistance. In a parallel circuit, the resistor with the lowest resistance value will also carry the most current. Resistance in parallel circuits. The total resistance of a parallel circuit is referred to as equivalent resistance. The three methods for calculating equivalent resistance are Ohm's law method, identical resistors method, and the reciprocal method. Ohm's law method. The Ohm's law method can be used when you know the current, the total current, and the source voltage of the parallel circuit. The resistance is equal to the voltage divided by the current. Identical resistors method. When all resistors in a parallel circuit have the same resistance value, the identical resistors method can be used to find the equivalent resistance. The total resistance equals the resistance over n, which is the number of resistors there are. The reciprocal method. If you don't know the total voltage or the total current and the resistors do not have the same value, then you can use the reciprocal method to find the equivalent resistance. The total resistance equals 1 over 1 over the first resistor plus 1 over the second resistor and all the way down to however many resistors you have. Series parallel circuits. Resistance in series parallel circuits. Uh, Step 1. Draw arrows on the circuit showing the direction of current flow throughout the circuit. Step 2. Locate and draw a box around each of the sub-circuits through the series parallel circuit. Step 3. Solve for the series and parallel sub-circuit equivalent resistances. And Step 4. Solve for the total resistance of the circuit. Current and voltage in series parallel circuits. Ohm's law is the simplest way to calculate current in a series parallel circuit. Step 1. Solve for each sub-circuit individually. Step 2. Find the total current using Ohm's law. Step 3. Find the voltage drops for every component before you find the current. Step 4. Find the current for the whole circuit using Ohm's law. Answering the following questions in your engineering notebook. How is voltage generated? What are the differences between voltage, current, and resistance? What electrical properties can a dig digital multimeter measure and how are these measurements taken? How is resistor color code used to determine the nominal resistance value and tolerance range of a through-hole style fixed resistor? What does Ohm's law reveal about the relationships between voltage, current, and resistance in a conductor? What are the characteristics of a series circuit? How do parallel circuits differ from series circuits? And if two objects are both positively charged, will they attract or repel, and why?